guys, morning. welcome to a mukbang. I'm and saying good morning because it's breakfast time. It is, we've never had a mukbang with breakfast. No, we? but we did have a request on Snapchat, so here we go. Here is the famous TVC breakfast. <laughs> You've never seen this before, have you? <laughs> Oatmeal. Yeah, and people ask us all the time, how do we make it? Very, very simple. We've actually got a video on it. The ratio is two cups of water for every one cup of oats plus an extra one cup of water at the end. So we make it in our <laughs> rice cooker, as you'll see in the video, but we used to make it on the stove top when we had a stove top yeah. and use the same ratio. And that seems to work for us. But mm. some people like a thicker uh, porridge or oatmeal and some people like a runnier, thinner one. So, yeah. you know, adjust the ratio according to your taste preferences. Exactly. And a lot of people like to cook their oatmeal in with uh, plant milk, which is also nice. Yeah. We prefer just to do it with water. It's a lot lighter. Um, yeah. yeah, we just like it that way. Yeah. Um, How to cut a mango. Uh, <laughs> we've also got a video on that. <laughs> and there are many, questions. and again, there are many, many ways to cut a mango. That's the one we show in the video is just the way that we like to do it. But you know, there's mm. heaps of ways. Yep. And today we're having it with some banana as well as mango. Bananas under there. And as we've said a million times, it's so cool seeing people um, take photos of their oatmeal um, fruit breakfast and then send it to us and hashtag that vegan couple breakfast and uh, in, mm. inspo and blah 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 which is awesome some of the mangoes do look a little uh, unripe right. so we just want to say you don't have to have it with mango by any stretch of the imagination use whatever sweet ripe fruit you have available to you yeah. whether it's bananas mangoes or any other type of fruit that's all that matters, just having some fruit with some oatmeal. It, it doesn't have to be mangoes. No. I'm going to get into it because... Uh, I know, we're so hungry. We, we had hungry. a watermelon before we this. Did. And uh, of course, we've hydrated before we mm. eat, always. And uh, I wanted to say, oh yeah, when we were living uh, back in Brisbane and we had a stove, like a proper kitchen, and we would cook the oatmeal on the stove, mm. we used to do something really, really good. Good? Good? <laughs> um, we would add the cinnamon all the mixed spices into the oats as they were cooking. Do you mm. remember doing that? I do. And then we would add some more on top and that just gave it a lot of flavor. You like that? I, I did, you didn't? I, I think it I can, didn't. can it get lost uh, in the cooking process or it not? It can, but it still gave it more. Yeah, yeah, maybe mm. it could, yeah. Yeah, it was good. That and that was, was like um, cardamom, nutmeg, mm -hmm. cinnamon, those kind of warming spices. Yeah, and now here we just add the cinnamon on top. I love cinnamon, mm. I love the smell and for me, um, I can't have oats and fruit without cinnamon. Well, you could, it's... but you just prefer it. No, oh, I really, you really love like it. Food. I really yeah. love it. You're a cinnamon girl. <laughs> I, I am. Yeah. Mm. I just want to take a few bites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people also ask us, you know, how do you eat the same thing all the time? Because it makes us feel good. I mean, mm. the oatmeal is so satiating yeah. and the fruit is refreshing and the combination and of the sweet. two and sweet uh, it's just really fantastic i mean mm. we also used to do it um say you're traveling and maybe you don't have access to fresh ripe sweet fruit you can also use dried fruit mm -hmm. we used to uh, use raisins or sultanas or chopped up dates or prunes yeah um and any other vegan sweetener you might like you know sometimes we used to use a little brown sugar yeah there. that's right we yeah. do and what we like to do because we're living in a, a warmer climate is we will make our oats either the night before just let them cool down and then put them in the fridge mm -hmm. or we'll make them first thing in the morning as soon as we wake up and then we set them aside we go into our exercise we come back and they've cooled down to room temperature mm. and that's for me i like that so much yeah, more it's more it's like, like a pudding, pudding isn't it yeah. yeah but if we're in a cold climate which we have been before then you want, them uh, nice, you and want it nice and hot yeah, so, so adjust to your climate and also the world of oats <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> i think it's technicalities i think it's called oatmeal in the u.s mm -hmm. and porridge, porridge in australia and the uk i think so i, think so. I always mm. used to call it oatmeal in australia did we? Yeah. Maybe? Mm. Anyway. And then people ask, um, oh, is there much difference between, um, you know, traditional oats or uh, instant oats? There is some nutritional difference, but apparently from what I've read, uh, it's marginal. So, you know, we prefer to buy the traditional ones because they are slightly less processed mm. uh, and that's we, we prefer to lean towards whole foods whenever we possibly can but if you don't have the time you know the 10 to 15 minutes that it does take to cook the traditional rolled oats don't worry about go it go instant you know mm. it's always, instant oats are always mm. going to be better than bacon and eggs <laughs> yes mm. 
So please let us know down below, what are you eating as you're joining us? Are you having breakfast? Are yeah. you having oatmeal? Mm. Um, maybe it's lunchtime, maybe it's dinner time, maybe you're just snacking. Let us know, because we always like to know what people are eating with us. And it's so funny when we read the comments like, Oh, I wasn't hungry, but now I'm hungry. <laughs> Pause, <laughs> go and get some food, come back. Yep. It's cute. Another thing we do mm. is we chop up the mango uh, beforehand. Yeah. Again, pop it in a container, put it in the fridge, and then uh, have it a few hours later. Mm. And being in this warmer climate, that chilled fruit, yeah. as well as having let the oatmeal come to room temperature, oh, mm. it's great, isn't it? And one about, I have to share this recipe. Mm. recipe. Sorry, <laughs> triple. <laughs> In the winter time in Australia, we used to um, uh, make the hot oatmeal and grate an apple, a Ooh. very sweet apple, mm. and put that on top with mm. cinnamon and raisins, and mm. then collect the apple juice oh, um, yeah. from the grating and pour that on top. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. And some chopped up dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh, apple juice it's like with the apple grated pie. apple was the bomb, wasn't it? It was incredible, like like an apple mm. pie. But it's just a juice that collects on your board while you're grating yeah. the apple. Oh, seriously mm. rate it, please try it. Especially if you're in a cold climate. That's not the same in the in the hot. No. No, you've got to be cold. So, there you go. So, we've got a question on Tumblr. Oh, mm. Sometimes, what are these called? Little shell, the husk? Mm. The husk comes off. So if you see me picking things out of my mouth, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, we got a question on Tumblr asking us if we're okay, we haven't been uploading as many videos lately and we're totally fine. Thanks for your concern. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> and we always think it's so funny how people notice like any slight change mm. in the channel or our life or routine. It's like, oh wow. Well. Um, so we wanted to give you guys an update on what we're doing. We are... We're digitizing our coaching guide. So we were offering one-on-one -on -one online health and lifestyle coaching via Skype for about 12 months almost, mm -hmm. maybe even longer actually, because mm, we're doing it back longer. in Brisbane, yeah. yeah. And we're having great success with that, helping a lot of people go vegan, stay vegan, eat a healthier form of a vegan diet, and really, really enjoying that, um, seeing people achieve their health and uh, weight loss and fitness goals, awesome stuff. The only thing was, Obviously, the more time we were spending coaching people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, which is, you know, very uh, intense because we'd have them for, you know, say, okay, up some to a people, month, up, yeah, to a month. up to a month, and several yeah. people at a time. Exactly. So basically, we couldn't dedicate as much time as we wanted to the channel mm. and to reaching a wider audience when we were focusing on one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah. And it got to the point where we had to knock people back because we couldn't take on so many people. Which is terrible because yeah. obviously we want to help as many people as possible. So then we thought, okay, there has to be a more time efficient uh, way mm. of doing this so that we can continue to upload regular content to the channel and also reach more people who need help with the coaching. Yeah. So we're basically putting together like a digital version of mm. what we would do one on one. Mm. So it's a huge project. Yeah. And um, that is, it's kind of one of those things, you've probably found this like if you're at school or if you're studying, sorry, I kicked you. Um, you throw yourself into one project and then like if you go and start something else and then you go back to it, you kind of like, mm. you just got to sit down and dedicate yourself. So and stay in uh, that, that headspace, in yeah. that zone, isn't it? So yeah. that's what we've been feeling and we've, we've been working on this for like months and months. Yeah, but, but it's like little, little bits at a time, you know, and, and then just, leaving it for weeks in between. It wasn't where we happening. Put up more content. Yeah. Mm. So we just decided what we're going to do for the next little bit of time mm. is we're going to spend the majority of our time focusing on this project getting that done and we're going to use these mukbang videos as a way of staying on YouTube and we're going to be answering your questions so still providing that vegan education mm. but it's time efficient because we've got to eat anyway so we're like just put the camera on exactly. have a chat to you guys answer your questions yes. and that's the best way that we can work out how to do both things at the same time yeah so if you're watching this go down below in the comments and ask us your mm. uh, questions and the questions that have the most thumbs up or that we see repeated most often are the ones that we'll address in our next mukbang video. Yeah. So um, thank you for your continuous support and video suggestions and you know, go and do a response video for this person or that person. At the moment that has to be on hold, otherwise the coaching program is never ever gonna get done. So no. we're just kind of reprioritizing our time at the moment. Yeah, and it's important to, uh, for us to digitize this mm. coaching guide because there are so many people 
who need that detailed assistance. Yeah. And we can't do it all, obviously, yeah, on a one-on-one -on -one basis mm -hmm. anymore. Um, so we really want to get that done to help as many people as possible. Yeah. So if you are new to our channel or if you've just clicked on this video randomly, welcome. And we are, obviously we're a vegan channel. Our primary focus, mm -hmm. you reckon? No. I don't know. Oh, yeah. um, our primary focus is vegan education. Mm. We help people go vegan and stay vegan. That's what we do. That is the sole reason we are on YouTube, the sole reason we're on uh, social media, full stop, isn't it? Mm. So that's our focus, all right? Which means we have a list of questions that we have picked out, basically the most common questions that we get asked over and over and over again, mm. um, especially on Snapchat, we hear this a lot. So question one is, I'm a new vegan, do I have to throw away all non-vegan products, including food, clothing, cosmetics, everything that I had previously as a non-vegan, in order and excuse me and replace them in order to be vegan? Yeah. So this is not a uh, yes or no answer. We're going to answer this in several parts. Yeah. Um, the first thing I would say is the main thing about being vegan is not buying any new non-vegan products. Mm. If you have existing ones, what you do choose to do with those, that is a, an individual choice to be made. Yeah. We can talk about some of... Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But in terms of um, your non-vegan food, so if you've still got animal products in your kitchen, mm. we would say throw them away. And I know a lot of people say, well, it's wasting food, that's terrible. Mm. But it's not food. Mm. It's violence. It's bad for your health. It's bad for the environment. You're not going to... Um, give that animal its life back. Mm -hmm. So there's no point in eating it. We would say just get that away. People ask, um, should they give that food to somebody else? Mm. Our personal response is no, because I wouldn't want to encourage someone else to eat animal products. Correct. And I also don't want to, like if it's not good enough for my body and my health, I don't want to therefore give that disease to somebody else mm -hmm. that I care about. Mm -hmm. It is a tricky one though, because you could prevent that person from going out and buying more animal products. So again, no right and wrong. You know, you just gotta go with how you feel, what your heart says, mm. what you feel is right for you. Yeah. Now, in terms of clothing, cosmetics. Well, yeah, so when we went vegan, we were overseas at the time, weren't mm -hmm. we? And we had a lot of our clothing in storage back in Australia. Mm -hmm. And there were leather jackets and there were uh, wool, Suits. Yeah, but you're forgetting. What so about you forget forgets the story. We. <laughs> I knew you were. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> the point is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're listening like it's the first time you've heard it. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's going to be a long day. Um, we had shoes, leather shoes with us. No, oh, yeah. When we were overseas. See, remember? While we were overseas. Yeah, no, what? Um, hiking. Shoes, Hiking, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. That we would wear everywhere. Everywhere, like we were wearing them for years and they had leather on them. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted to replace them, but we couldn't find, especially for Luca, because mm. you're, you're I'm like. I'm a size 14, huge feet. And in Southeast Asia, Southeast Asians don't have mm. size 14 feet. No, and even when we're in South America, we're in um, Ecuador. And we look there as well, and they also no don't chance. have size 14 feet. So what we did was we kept. Those shoes, mm. even though we were vegan, we were ethical vegan, we still continued to wear those shoes because we couldn't replace them. Anything we bought from that point was obviously vegan. When we got the chance to replace those shoes, we did. Um, and yeah, with your cosmetics, and everything. And we just threw them out. We, uh, just, was, yeah. Oh yeah, with, you know why? Because they were really worn, like you couldn't pass them down to anyone, they were disgusting. Yeah, but also... Yeah. It was when we got back to Australia, we were able to acquire yeah. non, uh, sorry, vegan shoes, finally, yeah. that fit me. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, in the bin. Your cosmetics or your clothes, it, you know, if you've already purchased it, then you can continue to wear it until you don't want to anymore, until you can afford to replace it. Mm. it again, it depends on how you feel. Like, do you feel comfortable um, wearing leather yeah. and saying you're vegan, like encouraging that? Yeah, and the other quick thing, we had an option, of course. Uh, instead of throwing it in the bin, we could have taken it to um, a thrift 
shop mm -hmm. and donated it, yeah? Yeah, which we did with some of our clothing. We did, we donated we did. some clothing, uh -huh. we threw some out, we gave some away. Mm. Um, and that's another thing. You have to decide for yourself if you donate it to a thrift shop. Mm. On one hand, you've prevented someone purchasing a new non-vegan item, which is a good thing. On the other hand, someone is going to potentially buy that non-vegan item that you've donated and they're going to wear it, thus per perpetuating mm. the promotion of non-vegan clothing. It's tricky, isn't it's it? It's tricky. I think this Hence is no it's right or wrong. No, no it's, it's not an black and white. Thing. Yeah. One thing that we did do... Oh, you've almost finished. Do you see how fast he is? Look at that. Go on. Yeah, but I did a 5K run this morning and you were unable to exercise. So, yeah. One thing we did do that was really interesting is we took some of the big items, like we had a leather jacket each, mm -hmm. uh, you had a woolen suit mm -hmm. and there was a, a woolen coat. Yep. And we took it to a farm sanctuary that we had visited in uh, Victoria, Australia. Edgar's Mission. Yep. And we asked the owners and they were fine with this. We actually, we dug a hole and we buried those items. And it was kind of like, just symbolic. It was a, mm. a bit of closure to that, you know, cruel stage of our lives. Yeah. We went, okay, we didn't know, but we, we just, we just wanted to bury it. We didn't want to give the leather jackets to somebody no. else to wear. Yeah. Um, and that felt really good. And it was gorgeous, actually. Once we finished doing that, uh, a chicken came along mm. and just plopped herself right on top yeah, of on the, the, on the, the new dirt The patch. new soil. It was the like new, new life. You know, we're starting over. Yeah. It, was, it was very, very symbolic. Very symbolic, wasn't it? Yeah. I'll flash some photos as we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that question. Um... Yeah, same thing with cosmetics, you know, if you've already bought, the, bought them, keep using them until you finish them, if you're comfortable with that, if you can't afford to replace them, yeah. just don't buy new non-vegan products, that's yeah. the main thing, when you have the chance to replace yeah. and rebuy them, yeah. go for it. It's the same also with the toiletries and household yeah. uh, cleaning Everything. products, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. No right or wrong, it's up to you, mm. based on your financial circumstances, your morals and values and... Yeah, and just what, mm. how you feel, what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Next question. We'll get this a lot. Okay. It starts off with, <clears throat> Hi guys, I really want to go vegan, mm. but I live in dot dot dot. <clears throat> Enter any country yeah. around the world. We've had... Uh, somewhere in South America, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, anywhere, Every, it doesn't anywhere. matter. Um, and it's it's hard for me because I can't find vegan products, yeah. and my the culture and my family all eat meat, and it's just so hard for me to help. Yeah, so here we go. In terms of the culture, it's the culture of every culture Everywhere. to eat animal products the world over. Mm. That's why there's only you know 1% of the world's population that are vegan, for example, because 99% are eating animal products. So it's in everyone's culture. You're not in a special no. condition. There's nothing different about your situation yeah. to us yeah. or anybody else yeah. in the world. And I was all thinking, you know, some people say, oh yes, but it's especially, mm -hmm. uh, there's a big emphasis on it in my culture. There's a big emphasis on it in every culture. <laughs> you know, like for it example, it is our culture. You know, um, it is our culture. Exactly. Colonized countries like Australia, for example, where there are communities from all different ethnicities. Yep. A barbecue um, is a central part of our culture. That's if right. you don't have a barbecue, especially on an Australia day, mm. we have um, television ads around the country telling you you are un-Australian. That's how much of our culture it is. Yeah, so that's to, that's the culture. And then as for the products, so the common ones are, you know, the vegan uh, meat, dairy, and egg substitutes, um, or oils even. Haven't we had uh, no, some specific oils? You know, for coconut example, coconut oil. oil or what have you. And that's mm. because um, people are under the impression that those vegan meat, dairy, and egg substitutes are necessary in order to eat a vegan diet and be vegan, when in actual fact they're not at all. I mean, mm -hmm. look at us, uh, if you follow us on, <laughs> it's funny because some of these questions come through on Snapchat. Yeah. 
a platform on which we show what we eat for breakfast, lunch and dinner every day, which we also used to, uh, up until recently, upload on YouTube regularly. Yeah. So we would think, well, aren't you watching what we're eating? Mm -hmm. And can't you see that we're not eating any of the things that you are saying are not available in your country? Yeah. And we're like, we're clearly showing mm -hmm. you that you don't need them. So how come you're asking us, yeah, you know, you... That we're saying that it's a problem for you, mm -hmm. that you can't have access to them? Yeah. Just keep it simple. Like someone sent us a, a snack the other night and they bought this brand new um, beautiful vegan cookbook. It looked gorgeous yes. and the recipes were beautiful and everything. But it's hard to follow that if you don't have access to, you now there was vegan butter mm. and a few other products that she just didn't have. Now that's great, but it's complicating it. Keep it super simple the yeah. way we do. There's vegan food, basically meat, dairy, eggs, three things to and take honey. out and honey. Mm. Four things. Four things to take out. Everything else, there is vegan food in every country around the world. Because people say, I don't have any vegan food here. <laughs> you don't have fruit, vegetables, grains, potatoes, legumes. legumes. Yeah. You got vegan food. Nuts, it's yeah. just not, you know, soy milk or, or hemp cheese or something. Mm. They're the extras. They're the nice, you know, if you have them, great. But you don't need them mm. to be vegan. And you're actually going to be a healthier vegan without those you know additional more processed products yeah. so um yeah it's not hard for you it's the exact same for you as it is for all of us we're in thailand people think we're in australia sometimes they say oh it's easy for you you've got so many vegan options in mm. australia we're in thailand we don't have vegan cheese here we choose not to eat the um the uh plant-based meats um i don't know if there's vegan milk here is there plant milk I don't yeah, even, yeah, yeah, yeah. Milk. yeah yeah um, yeah yeah when we first arrived last year on occasion mm. we were having some soy milk with our oh, cereal. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So... And then we just uh, switched to water, didn't we? Mm. Yeah, because as you said before, we find cereal or oatmeal lighter using water than uh, a plant milk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Me too. Plus they're um, more expensive here because they're in imported items. So, exactly. Yeah. That's the other thing, if you want to keep vegan nice and cheap, then Eat really simple the way we yeah, do. Stick to whole plant foods wherever you can. Mm. So I hope that helps answer that question that we get a lot, don't we? We do. Yeah, people all over the world. So I don't know. Like maybe if you were on the North Pole or something. Who is though? <laughs> if, you've got in, if you've got internet access, you've That's got thing. access to rice whole and plant a can foods. of beans. Yeah. You know, like the potatoes everywhere. Yeah. I could live on potatoes. Yeah, bananas mm. the world over. Mm. Okay, I think we'll wrap it up. I never finish my full meal while making these videos because I do all the talking and he eats. I do talking too. You can, uh, we'll play this back and you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you let us know what you were eating. Mm -hmm. Like, share and subscribe. And remember until next time, going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. See you next video. Bye guys. Today's video is about vegan cosmetics and I'm going to answer a few of the most common questions we get and also review the products that I'm wearing from 100% Pure. So the first most common question is, is cruelty free the same as vegan? And the answer is no. 